Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Room and on today's video I'm making a quilt for my boss. Actually it's like my boss's boss's boss. Very high up there which means if I fail I'm gonna get fired. No I'm just kidding but it is for my boss and we have a nickname for this person we call him Hefe. If you didn't notice I don't like to use like people's names. I don't like to you know call them out on video. I may use their first name or in this case a nickname that we call him Hefe. So first I want to introduce the project, then I want to tell you about Hefe. But first let me tell you about the project. Hefe loves Okinawa. He used to live in Okinawa. So I'm gonna make him an Okinawan themed quilt. And how? In the first place the quilt is gonna be inspired by Boro, which is a Japanese textile art which I'll talk about. And then I'm gonna do some applique on it of Okinawan themed symbols. So first let me tell you about Boro. When I was in Tokyo last year, I purchased this at a street market. To my knowledge, this is an authentic piece of Boro. Boro is essentially a Japanese style of garment mending. And basically in this is my understanding from reading it online. In the olden days, like I think probably 1800s, maybe even before, when you had like peasants working in the fields, poor people, they would have their garments, which were made out of this um, indigo dyed fabric. When they needed to mend the garments rather than buying a new one, either because they didn't have money to buy a new one or just to be economical, they would mend it. They would mend it by putting patches over it, and these are just raw edge patches. I'm going to splice in a more better footage for you to see, but this is scarf. They would patch it, and they would use this year after year, generation after generation, to the point where it eventually became more patch than the original garment. And it's now become sort of like a folk art, and it's become appreciated for the beauty of it. Whereas at one time it may have been considered like something to be ashamed of. Now they celebrate this as an art form and it is actually beautiful. I really like it and it's really cool. The stitching that they do, which is called Sashko. I took a class on Sashko when I was in Tokyo. Actually, I did it twice when I was there once with my mom and once by myself. But that's essentially what Boro is. It's, it's just a Japanese style of mending garments, but um, it is an art form appreciated now anyway and I purchased this um, it was very dirty when I bought it I hand washed it I hope that was okay but I, I had to because it smelled really bad um, and it hangs over there you can't really see it in the video but I just hang it up over there so let me put this away and I'm gonna tell you what I'm actually doing because my quilt is actually inspired by we're not doing actual boro we're doing kind of like David ties my, my version of it take inspiration from this um, and not necessarily copy it. So hold on, I'm gonna put this away and then I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. All right, so for my quilt, for Hefe, I have here some blue indigo dyed, in some cases it's actual indigo dyed fabric, like the kind that would be used for Boro. Like it. I think some of this actually is from that era. I purchased some of this in Japan I purchased some of it online and it's 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 like what they would use you know I, I can't say that it's necessarily precisely the thing they would use but it's like it we're doing you know we're doing a Dave Ties they should here so I'm gonna do a more controlled version a controlled chaos version it's just like a quilt that what's her name welcome to so very easy my name is Laura Laura that Laura did on her channel I'm just gonna cut this into two and a half by four and a half inch pieces and I'm gonna put them in here mix them up randomly select from it two together you know like that that's gonna give me the vibe of some of the quilts I saw in Japan last year when I went to Yokohama for the Yokohama quilt festival I try to put in pictures if I can find good ones of ones I mean I believe some of those quilts were inspired by Boro as well, and it's not necessarily the same type of chaotic patchwork version, but it's just inspired. It's like the same colors, 
and all that. So that's essentially what I'm doing. Then that's the background of the quilt. Then I'm gonna applique on it. I'm gonna applique, I think, a Tory gate. I don't know much about it right now. I'm gonna put it in the voiceover. And then I think the shape of Okinawa maybe. Um, I'm still kind of hammering that out. But, oh, I really like this plaid. This fabric is clean. I will wash the quilt afterwards as well. I always wash the quilts before I give them to people because I wanna make sure that they can hold up in the washer before I give it to the person. And I'm going to hand quilt it slash coast style. Cool, let me get started by cutting, ironing and cutting. And I need to tell you all about Hefe. Let me make sure I got it right and to watch Laura's video. Welcome to So Very Easy, my name is Laura. She had a scrap quilt that I really liked. Oh, this is it, how to make a true scrappy quilt. Welcome to So Very Easy, my name is Laura, and the quilt behind me is a true scrappy quilt. You just need to take all the scraps and cut them to two inches by three and a half inches. That that's, might be a little bit of a problem because I want them bigger. Two and a half by three and a half inches. Sorry, two by three and a half inches. What if I did two and a half by four? I gotta figure this out. I wanna do it a little bigger to, to have a more substantial size to each one. We need two and a half by four and a half inches. Guys, what I'm talking about, since you probably don't know what I'm talking about, when I sew the two pieces together, they have to be, the width has to be the same as the length of the next piece. And then since I have to consider the seam allowance as well, that's why it's not just as easy as two and a half, you know, two by four, whatever. Um, that trips me up often. So this goes back into scrap bin, which is over there now, and um, we can proceed. Thank you, Laura. Okay, so let me tell you this story about Hefe. Guys, if you didn't notice, I don't really, I never say what my work is on the channel. And the reason for that is because I like to separate between my work and my channel. Although it's a little tricky because all of my friends are also my coworkers. That's pretty much everyone I know. So that's why when I tell the story, it's gonna be vague. I'm not necessarily trying to be cagey. I just don't like to share the details of my private life to include my work. But I do want to tell this story because it's very important. About three years ago, I was working in an office in New Mexico and I wasn't really living up to my full potential. I had a skill that was not being utilized and I told my bosses about it and they were very like, yeah, you know, maybe someday, you know, there just wasn't any movement on it until Hefe showed up. And when Hefe showed up, he literally, he was like, oh, I understand you have the skill, so let's use it. He changed my job. He changed my job title and let me do something that I was good at and that we can actually use. And it basically gave my life purpose. And so that to me was like, okay, you know, that's the kind of thing that when a boss does that, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? And they always say like, if you want to know how good somebody is as a leader, don't ask their superior, ask their subordinates. So that's coming from me. That should say something. So obviously I was very appreciative when Hefe said he wanted a quilt. He said he wanted a quilt and I said, okay, what, um, what do you want? What's the idea? I don't know. Just try to come up with something. So I came up with this idea. I've not um, told him about it yet. I mean, he knows I'm making a quilt, but he doesn't know what I'm making. But that just goes to show, in my opinion, the people are more important than, you know, stuff like that's your job description. You know what I mean? Let's change the job description if it's not working out. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just cutting these into four, sorry, yeah, four and a half by two and a half inch. Then I'm gonna sew them into two catches. Then I'm gonna sew them together like that. And that's the background. I'm gonna keep cutting these. When I talk on camera, I can't have the AC on, it's too loud. I'm gonna change the camera angle, stop talking, and keep working.
the twin batting. I'll use it this way, this is sideways. It'll be just big enough. Oh! Then I can use the other half for like a baby quilt. This is the back, just big enough. So I said I would do applique on it, and I will. But I've decided to do the applique after I quilt it and quilt the applique through. Find the opening, turn it right side back out. This is the opening. All right, let's quilt it. This is thread that's used in Sashko. It's very similar to uh, embroidery floss. Okay, at this point I'm preparing the applique for the Tory Gate. And what is a Tory Gate? The history of Tory Gates goes back over a thousand years, and it's a type of Japanese gate usually found at the entrance to Shinto shrines. And passing through the gate symbolizes moving from the mundane world into the sacred world. I traced the Tory Gate off of my iPad onto FlexiFuse, and then used that to applique the red gate down. This is horrible. I needed <laughs> I needed to uh, reverse the Okinawa. This is good because it's symmetrical. This is not gonna work.
Yes. I do have the cone that this fits on that makes it fit on there, but I can't find it. Yeah, I can't find the cone. Oh well, we'll make it work. So this is the final result. I was so happy to give it to Hefe. He liked it very much. And that's going to be all for today's video. Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. And come back in two weeks because we're going to share the results of the 100 Days 100 Quilt Blocks Challenge Maple and Eucalyptus. And you don't want to miss that. So please come again.